Namaste World Razor, Sabina and Roger here. Let's watch the story of Ashtavakra, the cursed sun, with Sadhguru. We haven't covered Sadhguru in ages, it feels like, so I'm really mm -hmm. looking forward to this video. Totally, absolutely. So as you know, we are getting ready to listen to the Ashtavakra Gita on this channel. It'll be coming up, so this will be the second kind of introductory video to that. So if you haven't already seen our Guru Dev video, yeah. check that out if you haven't already, just to get prepared because there's a few pointers in that video. Uh, yeah, we got to be ready. We got to make sure we qualify. We got to qualify ourselves for these teachings because if we're not ready, if we're not ripe for it, then it's not going to be as beneficial. I'm sure Satguru has got some insights as well that we need to be aware of. So let's listen to this. Hit the like button for Satguru Ji for the Ashtavakra Gita, for God. Yeah, Sanatan Dharma. You heard of Ashtavakra? Yes. yes. Ashtavakra means eight types of deformities he had in his body. Hmm. He was born this way because he was cursed by his own father. What? When he was in his mother's womb. Oh, oh my God. His father was oh also a very famous uh, sage. Cursed. And a great scholar. <laughs> acquired many things we don't know how many lifetimes. When the wife is pregnant, it's part of the culture that when a woman is pregnant, she must hear all the scriptures and all the good things and knowledge because oh, wow. she should not hear wrong things, negative things. Hmm. She should hear nice, pleasant music, she must hear good things. People yes. read Bhagavad Gita to her, Vedas Yay. to her. Whether she understands yes. or not, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the child will listen. Slowly, its evolution will be affected hmm. by cool. what the child listens to. Mm. So, as a part of it, the father was saying something, explaining something about a scripture. Then suddenly they heard a voice disagreeing with what the father was saying. The child from within the womb said, no, that's not it, you didn't get it right. What? Oh, jeez. <laughs> the father got so incensed by this, an unborn son already <laughs> negating him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it yes. should happen after he's 18 years of age. <laughs> yeah, like, what? Yeah, awesome. An unborn one already saying you are wrong. <laughs> it happens when they come to teenage. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> totally. He oh, got dear. so incensed and cursed him hmm. that oh. let him have eight form, eight types of deformities. Wow. So right. he was born almost an inhuman form. Mm. twisted out body. Wow. So he was named as Ashtavakra, eight types of deformities. Mm. Father was a... He was in the king's court, in King Janaka's court, as a scholar, a very accomplished scholar. King Janaka has such a thirst to know. Mm. He wants to become enlightened. So he gathered all kinds of sages and scholars and the works, anybody who could get anywhere, he brought them into his court and he wanted to listen to their teachings. Just wow. He himself became an accomplished yogi over a period of time, but he still not realized. Then one day, Ashtavakra's father took this little boy to the court. When the king, Janaka, saw Ashtavakra, Ashtavakra held the king's eyes. When the king looks at you, you're supposed to look down, which all the scholars and the, mm. everybody do. But this boy just looked at him straight. Boy. Mm. So Janaka was wow. little taken back. A boy, such a distorted body, he almost has not even a human looking body. But the boy's eyes were such, he just stared at the king mm. and uh, said, All these scholars who are sitting here, with all due respect to all of them, nobody, none of these people, including my father, will be able to give you what you're looking for. <laughs> the king was flabbergasted, <laughs> this eight or nine-year-old boy saying what? this to him. Young, and his father right. wanted to nuskify him. <laughs> 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 this fellow has this habit of saying these things right from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> from the womb. <laughs> Then Ashtavakra, at the age of twelve or fourteen, he left the family and went into the forest. Hmm. One day King Janaka went hunting with his retinue of soldiers in the works. And in the heat of hunt, 
he got separated from the soldiers and he got lost in this forest. Then he found Ashtavakra sitting in the jungle. Hmm. So Kring Janaka sitting on his horse looked at him and said, you are here. He said, yes. And Ashtavakra in his own way said, and it's me who has drawn you here. Whoa. From your people, away from all of them. If you're willing to just take instructions from me, I'll get you there. Wow, so what you're looking for. So King Janaka wanted to ask, did you see any of my soldiers? Did you see any of the royal retinue around? Because he wants to find them and go back home. So Ashtavakra asked, what is more important for you? What you've been claiming all your life that you want or you want to find your way home? Which way is it? Hmm. it this hit the king so much. <laughs> he said, uh, no, that's the only thing I want. I don't care whether I go back to the palace or not. Wow. Mm, nice. And he wanted to get down from the horse. He took one leg off the stirrup and he was up, one leg up, one leg here. Astavakra said, just stop. Stop right there. When he was just getting off the horse, he asked him to just stop there. Stuck in an uncomfortable position on the horse like this, hmm. one leg up, one leg in the stirrup. Hmm. So just stay there. This is the first act of Zen, okay? This is some eight thousand years ago. And Janaka realized in that uncomfortable position, he suddenly burst into enlightenment. What? He hmm. got down and bowed down to Ashtavakra and wanted to stay there. Wow. After a certain period of time, Ashtavakra said, you go back to the palace. King Janaka said, no way, the palace means nothing to me, I am not going back. So Ashtavakra said, the question is not about whether you want to be a king or not. The people of this nation need an enlightened king, so you must go. So he sent him wow. back. Hmm. There is a beautiful hmm. incident that occurred around Ashtavakra. When Janaka Maharaja, the emperor, became enlightened, hmm. wow, a rare thing, an emperor becoming enlightened. Totally. It's not only a rare thing, it is a fantastic thing <laughs> because an enlightened ruler means many things to the people. That is no better blessing. So when it happened, Ashtavakra, his guru, as gurus are known to be always difficult, <laughs> when you just think you found your way, they tell you that's not it <laughs> When Janaka thought he's enlightened and this is it, Ashtavakra said, that's not it, mm. you have to go back and rule the kingdom because you may not want it, that's not the point. The point is people deserve an enlightened king. Mm. Yeah. So, Janaka, whenever he found time, he made his trips to Ashtavakra's hermitage oh. in the… little deep into the jungle. So, Janaka making regular trips to the hermitage. Obviously, because gurus are lonely people, you know. <laughs> oh. Because where to find enlightened company? <laughs> Very difficult. <laughs> so, obviously both of them enjoying a certain rapport, mm. both of them enjoying each other's company. All the other disciples saw this, that Ashtavakra, the great being, has a… seems to have a certain weakness for the emperor. Whenever he comes, they are chatting away, laughing together, this, this, this. These people who have left everything or they think they have left everything and come and they are here as sannyasis, not paying enough attention to them. But if you leave them ten minutes with him, they won't know what to do next. 
So there are little bit of resentment building up. Ashtavakra is conscious of it, he let it build up because every build up is a possibility. <laughs> something should build up, <laughs> then only you can do something. If nothing builds up, that means there are dead people around, <laughs> not live people. <laughs> if live people are there, something must build up. Joy must build up, love must build up, ecstasy must build up or at least resentment or hatred or <laughs> jealousy, something must build up. <laughs> something is building up means we can do something with them, mm. nothing. What to do with them? <laughs> so he let it build up and then this incident occurred. Janaka also came and he was sitting in the satsang at the back and as the Ashtavakra was speaking something, suddenly a soldier burst into the satsang and without even looking at the guru, he ran to the emperor with a loud voice, he said, the palace is on fire. Oh, eh? oh boy. You need to come right now. Hmm. Janaka said, get out of here. <laughs> How dare you run into the satsang? Without bowing down to my guru, you run here and shout some nonsense, just get out of here. Hmm. And Ashtavakra continued with whatever had to happen. So Janaka just sat there, palace burning. Nobody's concerned here. There, of course, they're screaming, but here, oh, nobody's concerned. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Then this continued, it's a lap of the master event, three days, you know <laughs> 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 Till you feel your legs have had enough, it continues <laughs> Then it was going on and one of the boys who is helping around in the ashram ran into the satsang and said, a bunch of monkeys are playing havoc with these brahmacharis' clothes. The moment this boy said this, many of them got up and ran to save the clothing. What is their clothing? Not designer stuff, it is designer of course, but <laughs> just a piece of loincloth, a piece of cloth. They ran to save those cloths and then they chased away the monkeys and recovered whatever they could and they came back. So Ashtavakra continued and then he said, here is an emperor, his palace full of wealth and people, not only physical wealth, there are people, there are lives, mm -hmm. people who are dear to him. Palace is burning, but he is concerned about breaking the rhythm of the satsang. You, who claim that you've given up everything in your life, hmm. for a piece of cloth, without even thinking you run out, without even looking at me, to save a piece of cloth. Hmm. No, but we have only two, one we are wearing, one is there. The monkeys take it away, what do we do? Hmm. So we are in a more needy situation than the emperor. Maybe emperor can be another, build another palace, but we… Well, you could learn something from Adam <laughs> <laughs> There are lots of Adam's underwear in the trees <laughs> So Ashtavakra said, the question is not about what you possess, it's about how you possess. Mm -hmm. Even if you have a kingdom in your hands, you can hold it in a certain way. Kingdom is not necessarily outside in terms of wealth and people and money. For most people their kingdom is their own body and their mind. How you hold it? 
if you hold it one way, it will make you bleed with pain. If you hold it another way, you will be spot on with life because it doesn't take effort to be life. Mm. I'm just reminding you, you are life, hello? Mm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you are. Just see, the rock which is standing next to you, how simple and easy it is. Yes or no? If you were not life, how simple and easy it is. This is why people want to drown themselves in alcohol and drug and excessive food and something else and something else or the toilet cleaning. Because in some <laughs> way you have discovered Work. not being life is so simple and easy. Mm -hmm. If you're not very alive, it's so simple and easy. Just sit somewhere like, like a rock. But when the moment of death comes, you know you are life pretending to be something else, otherwise you couldn't die. <laughs> hmm. That will become a point of infliction. So, we want you to be conscious. This is the reason why I'm constantly reminding you, you will die one day, you will die one day, I'm not wishing death for you. It's just that without my help it'll happen, I'm confident about that. Mm. Hmm. I don't have to wish you death, you anyway will die. So constant reminder of death is just this, to make you know your life. You can't go about mm. like this rock, you can't go about like a mechanical creature who can walk and talk and do everything that you can do, but cannot be alive. That's mm. an important thing. Is it an important thing? No, no, no. If I can do what somebody can do, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter whether I'm alive or not, isn't it? If I can do things as good as somebody else, if I can be as successful as somebody else, if I can possess what somebody else has or nobody else has, that's good enough. For most human beings, that's good enough. Hmm. So, in many ways, unconsciously they have understood the solution for life is not to be life. Hmm. But that's not a solution, that's a deception. Because no matter what you do, even if you die, that proves you are life. When you're alive, if you don't prove that you're life, when you die at least you prove that you were life, yes or no? Hmm. So you cannot escape this, neither with tricks of life nor with death, you cannot escape this. So is it a trap? It is not a trap. It is a tremendous possibility. Hmm. The soil that you walk upon, is aspiring to become life. If there was no aspiration, it wouldn't stand up as a tree. There is… that which is not life is aspiring to become life. Otherwise, nothing would happen in the universe. Hmm. Everything is aspiring to become life and become the peak of life. You can call this evolutionary process, you can call this whatever you want, but essentially everything that is not life is aspiring to become life. Everything that is life is aspiring to become a higher life. This is not a teaching, this is not a scripture, this is not somebody's ideology, this is the way. Life is always… this aspiration is there. Mm. The only way you can quieten it is by pretending to be not life or by getting enlightened. Hmm. Both these things will do the same, same result, hmm. but worlds apart. Sadhguru, nice to see him again. Oh, um, yeah. So I feel like he talked about Ashtra, Ashtavakra's story a little bit differently than Gurudev. Yeah, and it sounds like there might be different parts to the story perhaps, because hmm. the first meeting was when Ashtavakra was a small boy, it was like eight or nine or whatever he said. Yeah. 
And then he said that comment about none of these people will be able to help you. And then that was the end of that part of the story. And then he left. And then sounds like the king met him in the forest. So two different, a little bit different versions of where the teachings, you know, began to come from, right? So Gurudev was saying that the teachings were in the palace and that's where it mm -hmm. happened. And this looks like in the forest, but it could be just parts because there was probably like many okay. meetings over time, okay. right? So ultimately that's, for me, that's not that important. Like historical accuracies as to what transpired in the physicality, you know, how, to me is way, way, way less important than actually the teachings. So all we really need to hold in mind is that a king with this supreme power of be able to rule over his kingdom and his lands and whatever he says goes and he's seeking enlightenment and he wants to find out from anybody who has any sort of information all the gurus all the teachers all the sages bring them to me because i'm the boss and i want to know and then he couldn't find what he was looking for with any of them and then Ashtavakra. So just showing the prominence and importance of this being, especially because now that we're getting into it, we're hearing that this is like Osho was calling it a Mahagita. Mm. So like great. So we are very much looking forward to these teachings. Yeah. And to touch on what Satguru is talking about in the later part of this video, for me, the most important thing of his message is just very clear like we are life right now whether we deny that or not he's saying that some people are choosing just to be a rock totally <laughs> caught up in basically the ego's modalities right so these are like the modes of material nature so totally caught up in the material nature thinking that you are a person you know person rock structured in its identity solidified and then that's who you think that you are and then everything is happening as a consequence of that so very much teaching from the Bhagavad Gita modes of material nature but the other way more important way to see yourself is that you are life and to let for me life is equated with consciousness right because if there wasn't for consciousness we wouldn't be aware of anything so it's actually the very root of our life because yeah there's a heart beating there's blood pumping there's the lungs breathing and all of that you know is a process of what well it's a process of life and if there were no consciousness then we wouldn't be aware of that process at all which means it technically wouldn't exist so consciousness is primary so if you're going to be life and you're going to identify with life then you need to begin to identify more and more with your consciousness, right? So soul, Atman, you know, clear light mind, Buddha nature, the higher self. So all of these words are pointing to the same thing. So then it's talking about death all the time. So what are we going to do once we understand that we are life? So what's the most important thing? Some people are choosing to live like a rock. And then he's saying others, they seek enlightenment, which is the realization of life, ultimate reality. It's what we're here to do. It's the message of Sanatana Dharma. All the gurus, all the teachers, all the sages throughout time have been pointing to this one thing to transcend the false, you know, for the true, right? So what it's all about, people. So, yeah. So getting to the stories of the king with, you know, uh, Ashtavakra and the prominence of this great being and his teachings. Yeah, we need to be, mm. we need to be like, okay, these teachings are going to be profound. So we need to be ready for them. Yeah. I have a question. I did not quite understand the king not reacting that his palace was on fire. So I see it as like, yeah, the king, I don't think he's indifferent. And I'm sure at the same time, he's concerned for the beings present in the palace. But he also understands that there's nothing more important than what he is doing right now. Because even if he were to leave that, like, what would he do? He would just 
give orders that have probably already been made. Obviously, there's a fire. We need to get people out. We need to bring water. We need to put out the fire. If his ministers and his, you know, his court and the people that are kind of watching the palace while he's not there, if they don't know to implement all of that, then there's a real problem. So I think he's trusting his people to be able to deal with it, right? Sorry, oh, there was just a fire. Yeah. I somehow associated with it. There was an attack. I don't know. For some reason, I thought there is an attack going oh, on. Oh no, I didn't. Think oh, okay, of that. okay. Oh well, if, if it's there just was burning, a, okay, okay. Yeah, if there yeah. was an attack, okay. it might have been different. But also okay. at the same time, possibly not, because. So the king's main concern is enlightenment, transcending the dream, right, and seeing it as more important than his palace, wow. right, and then the teaching there also with the other you know, with the sannyasis, so the students, and then they find out that monkeys taken some of their clothes yeah. and then they got to go. Like it just shows the the greatness of the king in a sense, right? Because he can lose something, you know, massive, his palace. But he's like, no, the teachings, what's happening right now is more important than that. And yet the students are losing their mind over this clothes. I find it tricky though. It's totally tricky. I find it really tricky because it's, I feel like Krishna, t wouldn't he have taught something different, no? Well, about your, no, because the main duty, so the main duty within Sanatana Dharma, our main obligation is to, yeah, of course, perform the actions to the point that eventually we're on the path and eventually moksha, liberation, enlightenment, freedom from the cycle of rebirth. That's the whole goal for us human beings. That's it. That is the single most important thing, right? So if would have been if the king would have been doing anything else, let's look at it like that. If he was been do doing anything else, if he was a meeting somewhere or if he was visiting a family member or his mother or a friend or he was, you know, helping out with training his military, if he was doing anything else other than this, he would have reacted differently. He would have been mm -hmm. like, "Okay, let's go deal with it." But he's giving the example that this is the most important thing. Listening to the teachings, not interrupting, you know, the satsang, um, devotion to the guru, honor of the teachings and the guru and the wisdom that's coming and then this, the field of the guru. Okay. That's the most important thing. But if he was doing anything else, he would, of course, been like, OK, let's go deal with the fire. Yeah, okay. It's just a little tricky in my mind because I know that there are people out there who he might have been an enlightened being at that stage already, right? Or very close. Mm. So he knows that it's more, most important. But there's so many beings out there who, oh, yeah, I have to be in the temple now or I can't take care of my family or, mm. you know, I can't take care of the palace because I'm sitting here in meditation in the yeah. monastery in front of the guru. And you know what I mean? that use that kind of excuse mm. to not care. Oh yeah, totally. Um, so that's why I'm a bit conflicted with this message because I hope it doesn't send out the wrong message for the people who are that mm. self-absorbed to use it to their advantage even more. Mm. Yeah, which is why it's important to remember the core of Sanatana Dharma is duty, right? So we're not relinquishing any of our duties, but we're also remembering that spiritual practice and taking in the teachings and advancing on the path that's the prominent duty so it's mm -hmm. still a duty but it's got to be not that it takes over all of from all of the other duties especially for householders it's a priority it's prominent because also the thing is is that when you look at the sannyasis the other students in that story you know, they're the ones even more so that because they had less to lose. It's like, whatever, no big deal. So if they could have adopted, you know, the king's example and been like, okay, the monkeys are playing with our stuff. Mm -hmm. So what? This is what's more important. Let's just be present. We can deal with that later. Because the thing is, is that, yeah, the satsang's not going on forever, right? It's something that happens. You set an intention you know, that you're going to participate. So that's an action. And then you're going to complete that action, right? 
And that's part of the process as well. And then once that action is complete, then you go back to all of your other duties and obligations. But when you're doing an action, you got to do it. You got to complete it, not be distracted. So anyways, you guys have any thoughts on that? Yeah. Are you finding it tricky as well? What do you think the king should have done in that situation? Or, you know, fire, palace, people, right? Or, uh, or did he do the right thing? Yeah. Cool. Mm. Great discussion. Yeah. Love it. Awesome. Please add to it. Yeah, let's keep it going. Let us know what you think. And also remember to prepare your minds, mm -hmm. prepare the body, you know, prepare the speech. Be mindful of everything because we are diving into the Ashtavakra Gita pretty soon. And we are really looking forward to it because we love the highest teachings. And uh, yeah, it's going to be some great discussions, hopefully some insights, hopefully some mind-blowing moments as we dissolve into Brahmic bliss. <laughs> oh yeah, the Brahmic bliss is back. Yes. <laughs> yeah, cool. cool. Right. Okay, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. We love you. Yeah. Peace. Peace.